Good evening, my dear friends in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Sunday, the 11th day of July, year of our Lord's 2021, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Do pray this finds you well. Uh, fairly pleasant. The rain stopped this morning and it's not hot. Kind of muggy, but but it's a reasonable temperature out there. So it looks like it's going to dry up and then heat up again as the as the week progresses. Um, I was going to share some announcements with you, but I, uh, now I can't remember what they are, and I didn't write them down anyway, because so I guess it's not that important. The psalm tonight will be the fifth psalm. That is the psalm appointed for this day. That will be our reading. Uh, if you if you uh, me by way of advertisement, I'll say I use the Treasury of Daily Prayer, which is built around the daily lectionary. And uh, it has very nice readings, and it's uh, usually related to either the Old Testament or the New Testament reading. There's a little bit of, there's a psalm, which we'll be reading tonight, and a Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading. So the Old Testament reading today is from Judges, and then the New Testament reading is from the book of Acts. I chose to go with the psalm this evening, which I'll share with you in just a few minutes. And I see it's 9 o'clock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, as I mentioned, I'm going to sing for you the fifth Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evil doers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I through the abundance of your steadfast love will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Once again, that is the fifth psalm, as in the number five. And it is a psalm of David. It is inscribed, so we know he wrote it, to the choir master for the flutes. So it was played with whatever those ancient flutes looked and sounded like, uh, but uh, some sort of woodwind instrument, to the choir master for the flutes, a psalm of David, and then the psalm that I sang for you. So the psalm is divided up, as many of these psalms are, into sections, give ear to my words, so God hear me. 
you know, hear me. That, that, don't forget that we, remember, this is our prayer book. And there's nothing wrong with, God, with saying to our Lord and to God, listen to me. Hear me out. Now, because he promises to and he encourages, he encourages us to. He says, ask me. I don't think we go to God in prayer as much as we should. Meaning what? Meaning that, not that you're not prayerful people, and I'm sure you are. If you're watching to this, you're, you are praying. This is part of our prayers. But we think we're going to trouble God with little things, you know, uh, and we save the big, big things. So yes, certainly pray for the big things. It's a very good thing to do because God can solve the problems that we have no idea how to solve. He, he is God, so that's a good time to pray. But even the little things, things that are bugging you, uh, prayers of thanks, prayers you, you're you're not going to exhaust god you're not going to you know try his patience remember he tells us to not only pray but to pray to a point where you know we pastor him and bother him so david give ear to my words O lord consider my groaning give attention to the sound of my cry my king and my god for to you do i pray who do we pray and by the way why does the lord hear you because you use a lot of words because you use fancy church words no there's nothing wrong with that and we do that in church as we should I use the formal language of the church. I'll do it in my private prayer life and sometimes even here. But our prayers, particularly in our private lives, are often very short and very informal. We often don't have time to structure formal prayers. And these prayers just come from the faith that we have that flows from our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Lord, have mercy. You know, what do we do? Lord, have the simple things we say, the Lord's Prayer, which we say over and over and over again, which covers many of the, if not all of the situations that we're going to experience in this life. So, we're heard because of Christ. And the psalm ends with that. You know, in fact, I'll skip to it here. It says, okay, for you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favors with the shield. Well, Christ, of course, is the righteous one. But we, we, his righteousness is imputed and imparted to us. Is, it covers us in our baptism. So we are God's holy people, even though we have the backstage view of ourselves and we are often less than holy. We are indeed sinners. And yet we are covered with the righteousness of Christ. It is because of Christ that our prayers are heard. Never forget that. Never forget that. So then the psalm continues to take, it, it, it changes tone a little bit. You are not a God who delights in wickedness. God does not delight in wickedness. He does not excuse our behavior. You can't stand before God and say, well, you know, you made me this way. No, sin made you this way. The curse, the disobedience made you this way made me with saying that we're all sinners, we all struggle with various things, but, you know, you don't get to stand before God and say, well, you know, this is who I am, you have to take me. He hates wickedness uh, because it's destructive. It's not because he's got nothing better to do than to hate. That's not who God wants to be. It's not who he actually is. That's his alien work, this anger, this hatred. Love is who he is. Mercy is who he is. But he cannot tolerate wickedness. He gives us the good. We choose the bad. You know, and we destroy ourselves. We destroy our relationships, our lives. So you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. You and I cannot stand in the presence of God on our own. We will die. The whole Old Testament is proof of that, as well as the New Testament, but in a, in a much different way, because of Christ our Lord. So evil may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the blood per bloodthirsty and the deceitful man. God does not like sin because it destroys his creation that he created for good. Think about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are there for our good. And yet we despise them. And then we wonder why things are a mess. We wonder why our neighborhoods have become what they are. Our communities have become what they are. Uh, they, we wonder why people can't get along and why we're, we, we cower indoors and people can't speak civilly to each other, and yet we want no regard for the commandments. Well, that's the bed we lie in, so we sleep in it. But the psalm continues, and it takes another turn. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. Through the abundance of your steadfast love, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Through the abundance of that love, we enter your house through Christ. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. We walk into church, we're reverent. Now that becomes a very sort of, you know, people look down on that. Um, and I don't know why. Uh, we, we've lost decorum. I mean, I could tell you that. Uh, any sense of decorum, but particularly in church. Now this is not my church. You know, People are still have a sense of decorum. Thankfully so. Thankfully so. 
But people come into church, there's no sign of fear before God. The God who created you, the God who died on the cross for you, the God who, who is the author of life, who is the one who holds the keys of death and Hades, the one who's destroyed our death. You know, no, no reverence, no, no, you know, accept me as I am. That doesn't happen in our church, but it does happen. You know, a little fear of God, you know, would be a good thing. Understanding who we are as we stand before him and what we actually deserve and yet what he gives to us. So now the psalm takes another tack. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Because we're surrounded by so much evil and so much hatred of the Lord, Lord, you know, keep us on the straight and narrow. We have no hope apart from him doing that. And he says, once again, there is no truth in their mouth. Their, in their inmost self is destruction. Those who seek to make us turn our backs on that way or get off the way to not walk on that path. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels because of the abundance of their transgressions. Cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But then finally, let all who take refuge in you rejoice. That's us. We are people of great hope, people of great joy. Now, it doesn't look like that all the time. We'd be crabby and cranky. But yeah, you know, you and I have been with our brothers in Christ and our sisters in Christ at some of the worst times in their lives. And they might be sad. They might be scared. You know, and those are signs of the weakness of our flesh because we know what we are but yet there is joy and peace even as we face death you know there is joy and peace why because we know the story we know that the one who holds the keys of death and hades has freed us from everlasting death and that we when we take our last breath our soul goes to be with him and our body will rise from the dead and uh, when he comes back in glory so let those who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And that's what we'll do as we stand before him. And spread your protection over them. Let those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. That's us. We are blessed in Christ. You cover me with favor as with a shield. Beautiful psalm. That is, and I see I am way over time. I can count myself with these psalms. It's a short psalm, too. All right, let us turn to prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you invite us to pray, and hear us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. So now hear us for his sake, and answer us according to your good and gracious will. We ask you to be with those who are crying out for healing, those known only to you, members of our community, but especially those who have asked our prayers, those whom we know. We ask you to be with our brother in Christ, Jason. Place your hand upon him. Grant him your peace. Be with our brother in Christ, my brother in office, Blaze. Be with our sister in Christ, Kelly, our neighbor and friend of, friend of uh, our congregation, that uh, as she faces a significant surgery, that that may go well and that uh, your healing may be effectively administered be with her and uh, her family and jason's family and blaze's family and again with all those who are crying out to you heavenly father we ask you to to uh, continue to bless our sister in christ fern who celebrated a a, a birthday um or late this past week we give you thanks for the life you have given to her and for her family who was able to be with her we do pray that you'd continue to bless her, not just life here, but uh, that you would continue to bless her throughout eternity as she looks forward to that time when she stands before your throne. 
We ask you to be with our brothers and sisters in Haiti and ask you to uh, restore their government to some semblance of peace. Stop corruption here and throughout the world, especially in Haiti. We do ask you to keep especially our brothers and sisters in the faith and our Lutheran Church, uh, Lutheran Church of Haiti, but all your who confess your name there, that you would especially keep them safe. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing just a little bit of hymn number 686. It was one of the hymns we sang in church this morning. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. That stands as one and three of four of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, hymn number 686. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a very pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.